Welcome. This is the second video of two about the Falklands War. As you can see, the IB outline of how to approach a war is here, the causes, the practices of the war, and their impact on the outcome, and finally the effects of the war. This video will be dealing about the effects and how to approach that. As you can see with the effects, the IB wants you to look at the effects of the war, the successes and failures of the peacemaking, the territorial changes, the political repercussions, and the economic, social, demographic impact changes in the role and status of women. One thing you need to remember is this war was fought far offshore, was fought in neither of the home countries. The number of people inhabiting the islands was about 1,800 at the time. And aside from the military forces in and around the Falklands, there was not a large impact of the actual war on the home fronts. This is also because the war was so short and this made it a limited war rather than a total war. The whole economy, the whole society of Argentina and England were not turned towards the war. Now in terms of the content, we talked about the outbreak of the conflict. We talked about the course and the nature of the conflict. There you can see the General Belgrano sinking. And in fact, it was the single largest loss of life uh, during the war. If we go further down here and scroll, we can see that the British did land on the islands. Um, and what we want to see here are the costs and the consequences. Remember, the British win the war, uh, a war that was never declared. So there's actually not going to be peacemaking in a peace treaty. So let's take a look at the war and the peacemaking. So no peacemaking. Both sides stopped fighting. And in that case, there were no treaties like the Treaty of Versailles or the Treaty of Trianon. The war ended. The territorial changes were none in the sense that South Georgia and the Falkland Islands were all returned to English possession. So the war, the political, the territorial situation rather looked very much like before the war had begun. So the, uh, the actual existing tensions still exist between the two countries. So they've not gone to war since. As we take a look here at the cost of consequences, the British captured some 11,000 prisoners during the war, all of whom were released. Argentina announced that about 650 lives had been lost, and as I said before, the single biggest loss of life was the sinking of the General Belgrano. The British lost 255. So in terms of World War I, where we have over 10 million soldiers killed and, and many millions injured, this is not as devastating a war. On the other hand, the number, the size of the forces were quite small, so the numbers lost were significant. Military strategists have debated key aspects of the conflict, but have generally underscored the role of submarines, both Britain's nuclear-powered vessels and the Argentina's older diesel-electric craft and anti-ship missiles, both air-to-sea and land-to-sea types. And um, these, these missiles they're talking about are in fact the exosets. The uh, Argentinians had five air to sea, which they used to sink several ships, including the Sheffield and the Atlantic conveyor. They never hit an aircraft carrier. They also had ship to ship missiles, but those were on the task force that was accompanying the General Belgrano. And when that was sunk, those two destroyers returned to base with them. The British, it should be noted, also had Exocet missiles, but never fired them at Argentinian ships, since the Argentinian ships, uh, the warships in the area, all retreated fairly early on in the war. The British did have their nuclear-powered submarines sink the Belgrano, and it's probably another reason that the, the Argentinian aircraft carrier did not venture out uh, beyond the early part of the war, was also fear of attack by uh, submarines. The war also illustrated the importance of air superiority, which the British have been unable to establish. And um, while they, in the air, when Argentinian planes fought British planes, it was 22 to zero, uh, the British planes always shooting down the Argentinian planes. The British, with only about 20, 25 combat fighters uh, able to be in the air at any one time, really couldn't establish combat air superiority. Uh, and that plagued them throughout the war. And uh, was also the reason for several losses in the San Carlos Bay area and the loss of the uh, Sir Galahad troop ship later in the war. Now, the uh, logistical support was vital in this war. The British in, uh, decided on three days to go to war and uh, then had the time in their steaming south over several weeks and resupplied and reorganized the Ascension Island, but it was still a massive, massive logistical uh, problem they had to solve. What well, you need to know that uh, Argentina's military government was severely discredited, so now we're moving into political repercussions, and soon fell. 
There would later be persecutions, or rather prosecutions, on the persecutions that occurred in the Dirty War. And while those prosecutions became stalled because the military was able to stop uh, that occurring, the civilians did regain control of the government, so there were huge political repercussions in Argentina. There were also political repercussions in the UK, where Margaret Thatcher went from being a profoundly unpopular prime minister, uh, with millions of people unemployed, to a much, much more popular prime minister. She, uh, her, her time in office lasted a, a, a well over 11 years, uh, one of the longest serving British prime ministers. And the British, if we look at the economic, also had a bit of a revival in their economy with the newfound confidence they had as a nation that had carried off a war 13,000 kilometers away, triumphed over overwhelming odds, and along every step of the way showed themselves to be really a tremendous military force and a, uh, and, a, and a country that still had some power. Now, in terms of economic changes, I mentioned the British. In Argentina, their economy continued to falter, the high unemployment, and uh, skyrocketing levels of inflation, which had led the junta to look for a diversion or something to make them more popular with the people, continued. So economically for the Argentinians, it was a terrible, terrible thing. For the British, they spent millions and millions of pounds. And then in the reinforcements they put on the islands in terms of the improved uh, uh, defenses with the airstrips and the much larger numbers of soldiers they kept there. Initially, they had only around 100 Royal Marines. The uh, Falkland Islanders have become the most heavily defended people on the planet per person as a result of the Falklands War and some of the unresolved aspects uh, of the war in the terms of the peacemaking not having occurred and uh, Argentina still claiming the islands. Something you should also know is that, as I mentioned, the Argentina's military government was severely discredited, as you can see here in the terms, by its failure to prepare and to support its own military force, the invasion it had ordered, and the civilian rule was restored to Argentina in 1983. Meanwhile, British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher converted widespread patriotic support into a landslide victory for her Conservative Party in the parliamentary election of 1983. And then again, she continues in power for many years to come. In terms of demographic and social change, because the war was so brief, involved such small forces, compared to world wars like World War I, there's a very minimal demographic and social change. Remember, in Argentina, there are huge political and economic repercussions. In terms of the role and status of women, there is no change in that in either country as a result of the war. And while it may appear that women have a higher standing and a much more important status and role in England, it must be remembered that when you look at the armed forces, the government around Margaret Thatcher, she is really the only female there in a position of power, well, other than the Queen. And so in England, women still do not have that equality in role and status that we see today in the world. That's the effects of the Falklands War as it matches up with the IB. Thank you.